Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to just talk quickly through how I've done this ballerina and then I'll show you the full process at the end. So a little bit of a different way of doing things rather than a voiceover but I just wanted to talk to you about the process and uh, like I say I'll show you it all at the end. So I decided because I wanted to keep it quite delicate that I would use the art bars and just use a tiny tiny touch of colour. Um, so I've used this little plastic tray and you can see just how little colour I've had to actually take off the art bars. So basically just picked it up from the bar straight from the tin uh, and popped it with a little bit of water in there and used it wet in wet. The other things that I've used today, I began by drawing her in pencil and this is the thing that I wanted to mention to you the most really was the actual drawing of the figure. You see so many figures where they're clothed and they've not really thought about what's underneath and whether that's convincing as a figure. So when, whenever you're drawing and somebody's got a big dress on or something like this, start by drawing what's underneath. Thinking about where the skeleton lies, thinking about whether it's physically possible to have your leg in that position, etc. So you'll see the leg is coming from here, not here. That's because we're only seeing to about a navel there and the hip and everything's much further across. She's got that coming back. So you'll see when I do the drawing that I draw that in. I draw where the hips are, I, I can see where the line of the hip is between the two legs. I measure the legs to make sure they're the same length, measure the arms to make sure they're the same length. We seem to, we see a lot of um, ballerinas and people with bare arms, when people draw them and they've got a lovely outstretched arm, they tend to exaggerate and make the arm a little bit too long. So if you want to think about the length of your arms when you're doing your drawings, just look at your own body, stand up, and when you put your arm down, you'll see that your elbow fits nicely, snugly on top of your hip, um, in that space there, and your wrist comes just below your hip, with your hand, the finger, your fingertips about here somewhere. So just look at yourself when you're thinking about your measurements of your body and where things go and where it's physically possible for things to be. Of course there's always exceptions to the rules, some people are going to have slightly longer arms or shorter arms, bigger hands etc. And also the hands are bigger than you, than you think sometimes if you just, uh, if you look when I'm doing the drawing you'll see I alter that and make a hand a little bit longer. Okay so that basically I did it in pencil first to get those measurements right and then you'll see I put the dress on over the top. So that's the way you want to be doing it. Think about the body first, think about where that positioning is and then put the clothes on. And I did that using a fine liner, I'll just find it here. So this is the Unipin um, fi fine liner and you'll see there it says water and fade proof. So basically um, as soon as it's dry you can use water soluble materials on top of it. It's a very small size, it's 0.1 because with such a delicate subject as a very fine boned uh, slim ballerina you don't want to use anything heavy and this is another mistake people make when they're concentrating on the shape of the muscles and the shape of the arm etc you end up making it wider and wider especially when you're painting and it being too heavy for such a delicate um, dancer so with the actual application of the colors you'll see that I did add a little bit of shade. So I added some blue to this nice pink that we've got and the yellow there. This one's actually, I'm not sure the, the colour of that one, but that one's a sort of a very flesh tone anyway. You don't need to change that much. You can use that straight from the bar as a flesh tone. But I'm, I sort of mix these three and this one and you can get some lovely flesh tones from those. So I put a little bit of shadow where we would have it underneath and obviously down here you, the dress is going to be cast in a shadow. But I didn't make the contrast in the tones um, too heavy because again it's a delicate subject and I wanted to keep her feeling very delicate. And used, so I used exactly the same colours that I got in this little dish to do something on the floor and added plenty of water to that to make it look as if it's quite a shiny floor. So it's, I've not really used the art bars much in this way, using them wet in wet, but they work really well wet in wet. You'll see you can manipulate them afterwards and keep moving them around on the paper and mixing the colours on the paper and they're also very easy to lift off. So this is a mixed media pad, it's the Faber-Castell mixed media one and it's worked well with these art bars. So I think that's about everything I wanted to tell you about that. The good thing about doing a pencil drawing first is you can then get all this shape and things in with your pen and be a bit more loose with your pen, um, add little touches to a hair and things, but don't overdo the detail with your pen. 
just keep it nice and simple. Oh yes, and the last thing I needed to tell you was, of course, I did put a little bit of iridescence on at the end. I think I lost a little bit of film doing that, so I redid it. But um, basically the main thing about this is it's a Winsor & Newton one and it's made to use with watercolour. But the main thing with anything like this is that you give them a really good shape because they do tend to settle. This one's really nice um, to mix with water and put it over quite finely. You can use it quite thickly as well if you want to put an edge on something or if you're using it on something Christmassy like a Christmas tree or whatever you might want to use it in very thick blobs. But with this I mixed it again in here with a little bit of water and just put it over a skirt area and a dress. Nowhere else on the picture. We could go over the top with glitter and things but it's a bit like your highlights you don't want to overdo it less is more with that okay so I hope you found that useful if you've got any questions regarding figure drawing or anything like that in the if you want to put those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can like I say think about that figure underneath where the skeleton is especially where the shoulders line up and the hips line up and is it physically possible? I was going to say hold your po hold that pose, try holding that pose yourself to see if it's possible. But maybe that's uh, asking a bit too much. But yeah, if you just have a look at your own body and see where things line up, um, and you'll get much more convincing figures. And if you can, go to life drawing because that's absolutely the best practice, uh, best drawing practice. If you can go to a life drawing class if you've got one locally. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and I'll be back again with you soon. Enjoy the rest of the video. I'll pop a little bit of music on now whilst I do that painting. It was quite a quick process, working wet in wet and just carrying on with those few colours. So thank you for watching and bye for now.